there, and welcome to the Animag Podcast. Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Animag, the number one podcast that definitely didn't feel like recording this episode. I'm your host, Asylum, sitting here with... I'm a cuss. And we're back. We're back, baby! I should have listened to you yesterday when you said, oh, let's just record the podcast today, and then it would have been done by now. (laughs) Really don't feel like doing it, but we have to, for you, the people. Also, fucking cut a big chunk of meat out of the back of my gums on my teeth, so my mouth is, like, super hurting right now, and I'm still here doing this for you, so y'all better be thankful. (laughs) (laughs) So we got episode four. Finally, we're moving. We're roughly getting into the halfway zone of this season. Hell yes! We get more <laughs> power action. Power is number one. Uh, power is stinky and gross. And <laughs> I did the homework ahead of time on this episode. This ends right at the beginning of chapter 12. What you mean? Of She's book disgusting. Two. Bro, she what doesn't, we'll get there, we're gonna get there, but she doesn't wipe her ass, she stinks, she doesn't take a bath, I just don't we'll know. We'll get there, we'll get there. We'll get there, I guess. So, I don't know, I thought this was a good episode overall. It was. I, in fact, like the start, when Dinchy's still fighting. Yeah, so we, we jump devil. back in and he's still fighting the bat devil. And then next is the tentacle monster! I, at first I was like, I don't remember them saying this name, but I was like, it comes I was way later. Back to episode two, whenever Dingy was like, yeah, he got attacked by the testicle monster. I thought that was going to be the testicle because it kind of looked like a fucking. Bro, this thing looked like a big dick. Exactly. <laughs> the episode opened up. With, obviously, uh, a scene of power. Now, this was before Makima got a hold of her. And she was running around. She's eating animals. Like, just eating a fucking cow. Just cut his head off and just ate his ass. And she's hanging out with Meowie. All the while, she's naked. She's just thinking about how Meowie is just a cat. But when the bat devil told her to get a human for him, she ran to do it. So, she's kind of wondering, like, this is just an animal. Why am I kind of so attached to it? And then her eyes open up and she's looking right at the cat and as they close and they open up again she's in dingy's arms and he's holding her he manages to save her from the inside of the bat devil's stomach and Mm -hmm. the scene was pretty good they had guts everywhere and she asked him why he saved her even though she had tried to kill him he doesn't say a word he just kind of points to her titty and makes a squeezing gesture you know he's like uh remember i was gonna get to squeeze some titties here power says oh that's a foolish reason which kind kind of makes dingy think that she's saying no so he sits beside her and she's like forgive my deceit you did save meowie so you can go ahead and fondle my chest and dingy turns around he screams he's like hell yeah and he starts waving his arms middle of the public middle of the public fuck yeah like middle of the street starts waving his arms in the air but as he's doing this one of his arms gets cut off and we see yet another devil this one like we said looked like a giant fucking dick with legs (laughs) and they would walk on the legs kind of like a dog it's very hard to explain you just need to go and see what it looked like for yourself maybe google the leech devil we don't learn that that's the devil's name right here we learn that a little bit later in the episode still kind of pissed why in the manga it shows power caked up where is the cake I don't remember that. Dude, we were talking about it, like, last podcast. I don't know if it was in the fucking podcast or, like, you know, the after stories after we do the podcast, but I remember seeing her caked up. Fuck, I really can't remember that. I'm about to get my books and look. It's the story of chapter nine. Like, it's the title. Like, uh... Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Damn, wish they would have shown that. That would have been pretty nice. We get the intro, obviously. Now the intro's fully grown on me. I do appreciate that. (laughs) I love it. So we learned that this devil and the bat devil were apparently dating like in a relationship and in the scene power for whatever reason she can't move and at this moment they never wind up explaining why she couldn't move i guess it just has something to do with her coming out of a devil's guts <laughs> so she tells dingy to take meowie and just run and of course dingy's not gonna do that so he pulls his chain to transform but he doesn't have enough blood in his body to fully do it so he's about to fight this entire battle only partially transformed and this devil looks down and says well you are pretty cute 
quote, so I'll let you go, but your friends will die, meaning Power and her cat. And Denji puts his hands up, kind of like making a fist. Well, his one hand, because remember the other one got cut off. Yeah. And she says, well, then you die too. And they start going after it. And this was another pretty decent fight scene, considering that that Denji Denji was was half transformed, or not even half, really. Oh my god, I just love it. Because, like, Denji kept on going, even though... He really put his all into this one with only being, I'd say, 25% transformed. Just to fondle some boobs, to touch the man. titties, baby. This man is dedicated. I would be too. <laughs> The whole time they're fighting, Power's just kind of laying there on her back. Remember, she can't move. And she's watching and she thinks about how Denji's fighting so fiercely, all just to touch her titties. And Denji starts to look like he might be getting the upper hand when, bam, he's struck down. And the devil asks if this is a joke and how someone like him managed to kill the bat. And as she's telling Denji how he ruined her and the bat's plans to destroy humanity, he stands up and he says, I'm not dying before I cop a fee. <laughs> mm-hmm. This devil almost feels the same way Power feels about Dingy's whole touching the titties dream. She goes, that's ridiculous to think that Batty was killed by someone with such a trashy dream. Dingy has a moment here and he kind of reflects on everyone who has told him how dumb his dream is. You know, we got Power who's always like, that's an absurd reason. We got Aki who told him that just a couple episodes ago. And now this fucking devil that looks like a big pe- penis so i'm pretty sure he's getting fed the fuck up so he gets fucking pissed and this angers him enough to cut the devil's neck just a little bit with half of his little tiny chainsaw that's sticking out and he says everyone wants to trash talk my plans but i guess all your guys's fancy plans make you hot shit huh and he's like how about this if i murder you that means your dreams are weaker than fondling a tit and it's not a weird dream it's a man's dream come true <laughs> it's gonna come all true all the guys watching this are on his side maybe the girls that are watching this are probably like oh that's a probably some dream. Girl. but for us guys it's like you Yes! There's probably some girls in here that are like, hell yeah. Touch some titties, bro. Hell yeah! So they start fighting again, and Denji's killing it for a while. But the devil winds up getting him as he tries to, like, fly towards her by grabbing her hair. And she winds up thrusting her tongue through Denji's body. And right as she's about to eat Denji, we see a hand come into the screen, making a fox shape. And Aki says, Khan, and a massive fox comes out of nowhere and bites the devil's head off. I don't know if the head was inside of the wolf's mouth. I think it was. And the wolf analyzed this devil and we learn that right here it's the leech devil and here as the fox devil is vanishing and they got like smoke or fog going everywhere we get to see a bit of the crew that we're gonna wind up being fully introduced to as the season goes on and Aki gets Denji up and he says you and the blood devil need to be debriefed and he's walking past power she's still on the ground (laughs) and she's like what about meowy and he says get the cat to a vet so it looks like she's going to be able to keep Meowie, which is good. Mm-hmm. So Denji did fulfill his promise of getting her her cat back. And after all of this in the hospital, we see Denji in a bed and Aki sitting beside it. They found Denji's arm and they wound up getting it to infuse back onto his body. And the whole time Aki and Denji are going to be talking here in this scene, Denji's really only focused on the apples that Aki was peeling. <laughs> <laughs> And we learn that Aki has a contract with the wolf devil, or the fox devil. Yeah, the fox devil. And usually he has to give some blood for the devil to work for him, but this time he had to give some skin. Yeah. Aki breaks it down and basically says that he knows Power tried to kill Denji by taking him to that house where the bat was. And they saw them leave on the cameras and then found a bunch of Denji's blood leading up to the house. And Aki says, you're trying to protect the devil again, to which Denji... Denji's like, well, I don't know. Is that how it all happened? So Aki's like, look, if I dig deeper into this and report it to the higher ups, you and Power will both be put down. But since there were no fatalities, if you're willing to accept one condition, I'll let it slide. So he slides the apples towards Denji and he goes, you need to do what I tell you to. And Denji goes, sure, I'll keep it in mind. 
And he says how his dream of touching titties may not be as big as everyone else's, but he is serious Mm -hmm. about it so that Aki can count on him. (laughs) (laughs) And when Aki walks out the fucking hospital room, we see power in handcuffs. So Denji did wind up saving her ass because Aki lets her free. And this is going to be very handy for Aki a little later on too. The fact that he saved her ass. Yeah. So a little bit later in the day, we get back to the headquarters. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, it's later God. that night, and Aki's going to chat with Makima. And of course, before he actually knocks on the door, <laughs> <laughs> he fixes himself up so he's going to look presentable for her. He's like fixing, fixing his, tie, his hair. His fucking hair. <laughs> This guy makes it look like he's about to get a blowjob or get laid or something like that. I mean, remember he does have a crush on Makima. So something that I didn't really get here is that they both talk about Power and Denji being outside of the patrol zone. But Mm -hmm. Power and Denji got approved for a leave. Because if you think back to the episode before, they went to the desk and got approved so they could both leave, I guess, their designated areas. Mm -hmm. So something that I'm not really understanding in this episode is why Makima and Aki are bitching about it unless they don't know that Power and Denji went and got approved for a leave. I want to say that. Yeah. Because Makima's like, yeah, we could let him go for that. And Aki's like, oh, well. So maybe they just didn't know. And Aki kind of makes a case that like, sure, they both fucked up. But in the process, they got two devils killed. And he mentions how there were no traces of gun flesh in either of the devil's heads. And this is very important important for the bigger part of the story later on so remember that gun flesh yeah, yes and Aki's walking out of the office and Makima says you seem a little more flexible lately is that Denji's influence and he's like no I haven't changed at all but you can see that he's being a little more relaxed lately you actually see it uh after this when he's back in his apartment <laughs> oh yeah For sure. Because the old Aki would have lost his fucking mind, bro. So the final part of this episode takes place at Aki's apartment, obviously. I'm still laughing at a part. I was thinking in my head, like, right when uh, Aki leaves Makima's office, I just picture him turn around, looking at Makima and saying, still no head. (laughs) (laughs) Bro, you gotta make that a meme. (laughs) Damn it. I should have looked nicer than I do right now. So we get to Aki's apartment. This is the final part of the episode. I'm thinking like the next few days later after all of this. And we see him just doing regular daily stuff around the apartment. And we also see Denji here. I'm not going to lie. I'd rather his hair down. Yes, dude, he looks so much better with his hair down. And and remember, Denji lives with Aki. So they're about to make lunch, and they hear someone beating at the door. They think it could be a devil, okay? They're like, fuck, what do you think it's a devil? And then fucking bam, the door gets busted open. I'm talking like the doorknob flew off the fucking door, and it's power. And she says that Makima told her she should go live in Aki's extra room. The way I was thinking about this is, what if this is kind of like a small punishment? to Aki because remember when Makima's like oh you're being a little more relaxed lately is that because you and Denji are becoming friends like I wonder if subtly she's kind of sending power out there too to punish him a little bit maybe or like just to keep power in control like uh control power that's what she says she says oh you'll be able to handle the two of them but I don't know because he fucking hates fiends and he hates devils so now he's basically got both in his apartment I think she's low key trying to punish this man here we learn that power is an even worse roommate than Denji. She throws her vegetables all over the house just because she doesn't like them and she doesn't like to flush the toilet and she doesn't like to Holy bathe. shit, did you see that toilet? Bro, it had toilet paper fucking sticking out <laughs> inches past the seat. Her cat is fucking running around everywhere. It's probably shitting all over the floor. So we get to a point where we see Denji cleaning out the toilet that she clogged and when she walked in, he turns around and he goes, hey, Hey, shit devil, you stained up the toilet. (laughs) (laughs) He's obviously mad and she proceeds to not say a word, but she points to her chest and she makes a squeezing motion and immediately Denji is just not mad anymore. And she goes, we had a deal. So she walks in, closes the door. She sits on the toilet and she's like, you get three fondles. So now it's not just one squeeze anymore. He gets to squeeze three times. She's like, one for saving the cat, one for killing the bat, and another one for protecting her 
from Aki. So you see him saving her ass earlier came in clutch because it got him an extra squeeze. He has his hands over his face and (laughs) he's breathing all hard. And then he looks up and he says, she's an angel. (laughs) She's an angel. And then they literally credit roll us here and they don't let us get to see the squeeze. So next episode, next episode. Oh, she even fondled her breasts in front of Dingy. She did. She did, bro. And... Why do this on November of all fucking months? <laughs> they did that shit on purpose. I know it. It's no nut November. Fucking bro, I know some people lost because of that too. I almost lost to that. Oh my <laughs> god. Power is queen. But not the queen of waifus. That still goes to Akino Himijaya. Oh god. So the outro song for this one I didn't really care for. I know you said it I was up it. there. I thought I it was a it. seven. <laughs> Dude, power in a maid outfit, power in You're not judging the song at that point, though. You're judging the graphics. Take the the graphics graphics away and put a naked picture of me. How good is a song? 10 out of 10. No, my God. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, man. I I thought it was a 7. I don't really watch the graphics for the outros. I just listen to it because I'm I'm trying to judge their songs solely as songs. For me, seeing those graphics will probably change my opinion on the song. Because like the ending for episode three, it was like, eh, from start to the middle. But once yeah. the girls started singing, that's when it The did. singing saved that one. I just, this one just didn't click for me. We just have to see if they come up with another banger. I just don't like how they doing the endings, like different endings. Yeah, that is kind of annoying. Like you're talking about the songs being different or the graphics. The song. Like why not stick to one? I think they just, they really want, I mean, this is something kind of fresh. I don't know of any other anime that's ever done this. Like they don't do it every episode but like every season every season i think chainsaw man wanted to big dick it and be like look how much money we got 12 different outro songs damn i mean they've had some good ones so far and we still got a lot of episodes to go so it's a pretty good episode man i don't know if it was all that for me i think i'm gonna finally get some differentiation in my rating like it was solid don't get me wrong the thing that kept me on giving it high was the beginning fight between the leech devil and dingy even though dingy wasn't full fucking chainsaw man he was still going at her yeah true i mean like that's admirable i like that they kind of sprinkled in some shit that we're gonna need to remember like the crew we got to see them a little bit the gun devil stuff i don't know maybe this is a little bit better than i was thinking i'm gonna stick with my guns i'm gonna give this episode an eight i'm gonna give it a nine of course of course this man's giving it a nine oh i'm gonna have to get yeze in here get a real rating on this episode he's not even gonna watch it he's gonna watch somebody review it <laughs> that's what he did that's what? literally he literally told me he was like yeah i'll watch heavenly control fucking react to fucking god of high school and yeah this and that he was like yeah i felt like that i was like dude you just watch somebody's reaction that's it. I mean, true, but what do you think people are doing when they listen to this podcast? True. But they're not as bad as Ye Z. And that's oh. pretty much the episode, man. It's like, just because I'm giving it an eight, don't think it was a mean great it's... episode. It's still a fire fucking episode. I just yes. think with what's to come in this season, I don't need to give this particular style of episode a nine when I know there's going to be some fucking banging shit coming. Because sure, we progressed the story a little bit in this episode. We got a little bit of CD between power and dingy dingy got one step closer i'm pretty sure in the next episode he's squeezing them titties so like oh. next episode if i come out and give it a 10 out of 10 don't come crying to me yeah and then we did get like a hint to like the major devil like the main yeah. villain devil True. so and well we also got to see makima it's always a good episode when you get to see makima oh <laughs> 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 and that's literally pretty much it boys and girls yeah i kind of like that they have fight scenes that are decently long because you don't have to take as much notes when there's a big giant fight scene either at the beginning or the middle of the fucking episode it's good solid filler it's not like boring filler because you know shit's still happening i don't even think that they had a filler in the manga for what the fight no for chainsaw man i don't think so i think it's all story and it's like honestly if you never read the manga and you're watching this episode when this fucking leech devil like sticks 
sticks her tongue through him, you're like, holy fuck, weren't expecting that to happen. It had its ability to kind of take you by surprise if you've never read it. Yeah, we just have to see who he fights next. Pretty much. Kind of getting excited because we're inching closer and closer to some big battles. To, yeah. Major battles. But that's pretty much going to fucking do it for this week, boys and girls. <sighs> It's getting fun. We're getting to some pretty hot action. And we hope you're sticking with us along this ride. Even though I didn't want to do this podcast, it came out pretty good. Indeed it did. So we thank you for listening. And we'll thank you when you come back next week, next Tuesday, for Chainsaw Tuesdays. Chainsaw Tuesdays. (laughs) And until then, take it easy and so long, everybody. Sayonara. Thank you for listening. Be sure to visit our website at www.animag.org. See you next time.